You're a forensic consultant uh, involved in data breach. What does that typically involve? So in a data breach, uh, we're called in really to uh, answer two questions. First of all, has there been a breach? Uh, in most cases, it's not clear whether uh, attackers actually got in, uh, whether data has actually gone out the door. Uh, usually uh, IT or information security have an idea something has happened, but they're not clear what's happened. Now, there's going to be some cases where uh, hackers are boasting about having taken stuff, they've put it up publicly, or people have Googled themselves and see their own names. That's, there's nothing we can really do about that. But on the first one, where there's some chance of, of, of responding and answering that question, um, that's, that's our first role. And then secondly, even if there's been a breach, even if attackers have got in, uh, our role would be to determine how much data has been exposed. Can we limit it to a small subset so that there isn't a full notification of everything? Mm -hmm. So in your experience, it's not always the case by any means that an intrusion uh, equates to a data breach? No, in most cases, uh, the, the, the attackers are stopped or seen before they actually get to the crown jewels. The real problem for us, and probably it's a, a problem in about half our cases, is that the organization was not uh, logging, was not creating network logs, was not monitoring its own system sufficiently um, to allow us to disprove uh, the hack. They, they don't have the, the evidence available so that we can say, okay, we see the, the bad guys getting in over the wall, but they never get into the key part of the castle. They never take the crown jewels. All we see them is they get in and they get out. And uh, unless we can prove what exactly they did and what they've taken, in a lot of times that will be a de facto data breach with enormous costs and implications to the organization. And that would be a crying shame because if it's a de facto breach and we could have established or they could have established that actually nothing was taken, the size of that problem could have been a lot smaller. Yeah, probably by a factor of 10. Uh, plus you have the, the negative publicity. Uh, in America, you have various regulators who will name and shame you. Uh, so the very fact that you're saying, look, we didn't think we had a breach, but we're going to have to, be, we're going to, have to notify people, that is lost in the, the general uproar. Uh, all it will be was that somebody got in and took your data and, and you're notifying people, so you've admitted there was a problem. As you say, crime shame. And I guess that has a big impact on uh, the potential claim at the end of the day. If you can identify that uh, um, only a certain proportion of people were affected, then we don't have to notify those that weren't affected. Right, exactly. So we have two ways of trying to, 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 to stop this thing or, or limit it. The first is to actually prove that there's been no compromise of the data. Um, and uh, sometimes it's a gray area. Sometimes it depends on the organization and the lawyers involved, uh, whether they're going to push back and say, there is no breach here. Uh, but even when there has been a breach, even when you know, we can't disprove that the, the attackers got in, we can prove that the amount of data that's been taken or compromised uh, is limited. Uh, it was in part of a database or it was part of a thing. Huge reduction in the, the subsequent costs, as you say, notification, regulatory action. If we can nip it at the bud, the whole thing stops there. It, even if we can't nip it at the bud, if we can keep the numbers down, huge saving in PR, legal costs, that kind of thing.